When we're talking about synthetic division, we need to understand that this is a special case, special case of the division algorithm. Special case of the division algorithm when your divisor g of x is of the form x minus k. Remember how we've talked about forms, and when we see forms where there is a minus built into it, we're going to have to identify that k, and when I see that, I'm going to have to do what? Since there's this minus here, when I go to identify k, I have to do the opposite of what I see. So synthetic division is whenever we're dividing by something that's of this form. Now, understand something about this form. What's your coefficient for x? What's the exponent on x? If you don't have that, you may not do synthetic division until you make an adjustment. Okay. Synthetic division is just like long division, except all I have to worry about are coefficients. That's all I'm going to do. So let me show you an example of this, and then we're going to work through several more of these guys. Synthetic division is so easy. It can even make evaluating functions quick. Did you guys do this in 8 or 10? Nope. No. There is a section in Chapter 5 about this that's usually omitted in 0308. Now, notice what I'm dividing by. I'm dividing by something that's of the form x minus k. Do you all agree? What is your k, though? You have to identify your k. k is not 3. See, this is the form we're looking for, what we're dividing by, and it's got a minus there. So since we're trying to pull something out of that form, we do the opposite of what we see. Is that all right? Now. Just watch me how I set this up. <coughs> I'm going to take, and my synthetic division is set up just a little bit differently than the book sets theirs up. The k goes out here, and then I'm going to put the coefficients of my polynomial inside here. So my k is negative 3. My coefficients are, what's the coefficient of x squared? Coefficient of x and the constant. Make sure you pay very close attention to your signs. You get the signs off, you're going to be wrong. This whole exercise is all about can you add and multiply, add and multiply. That's all it is. And let me show you how it works. First, you're going to bring the 1 down below the line like this. Any number that's below this line is going to be multiplied times the negative 3. So what's negative 3 times 1? And that guy goes up here. The product goes up here. So that's negative 3. <laughs> then I'm going to add these guys together. So this right here was multiplication. And now this piece up here is going to be add. So what's 8 and negative 3? Five. 5. Now I do it again. I want you to multiply. So when I multiply, I get negative 15, and then I'm going to add these guys. So what do you get? Negative 20, or 27, sorry. You get negative 27. Now, I, I put a box around this here <coughs> in the, on the bottom like this. Now, let me tell you what these numbers on the bottom, which make up our answer, what they mean to us. Everything here is going to be one degree less. What's one degree less than x squared? X. What's one degree less than x? A degree of zero, which means it's a constant. And this piece inside here is going to be your remainder term. These numbers will then tell you the answer. So that means that this division gives me 1x <coughs> plus 5. And how do we typically write the remainder term? How do we write that remainder piece in 0308? Because it's the same way here. So we have a negative 27. What were, what were we dividing by? Negative 3. The k was negative 3, but the actual divisor itself is x plus 3. 
If you remember long division and you do long division, you get the same answer. Now, I want to I want to tell you what this means. That means that my polynomial x squared plus 8x minus 12. If you go back and you look at what we said <coughs> for our division algorithm. So this is basically my function of x, and it's supposed to equal my g of x times my quotient plus my remainder. So my g of x is what you were dividing by. What was I dividing by in this problem? And what was the quotient when I did that division? X plus 5 minus 27. X plus 5. And then what's your remainder term? Negative 27. So I maintain that this original function can be broken down. If you were doing division by g of x, this x plus 3, x plus 3 goes in x plus 5 times. But you had a remainder of how much? negative 27. How, how do I know this is true? Because you did it. Exactly. How about you check your work? So if I were to check this guy, what happens if I multiply x plus 3 times x plus 5? x squared plus 8x plus 15. x squared plus 8x plus 15 minus 27. And of course, when I combine these, what do you get? So it all works out. You could have gotten the same thing by doing long division. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to take you a little bit longer, especially with some of the problems I'm going to give you.